because they're not taking it all the way to like home base if if i should home say base. Uh, <laughs> or home run <laughs> home. you can tell i don't play home baseball base backwards <laughs> anyway Welcome to BYOB, the Bring Your Own Book Podcast. I'm Kelly. I'm Tilly. And I'm Nikki. Surprise! We've got a fun little BYOB shot episode for you about the witchy romance novel Go Hex Yourself by Jessica Clare. The book just came out a few days ago on April 19th, and we were all lucky enough to read advanced reader copies and loved it. So we wanted to record a short episode and gush. We also want to thank our sponsor for this episode, Anna Luisa, which we will talk about a bit later. Here's the publisher's synopsis from Nikki. When Reggie Johnson answers a job ad in the paper, she's astonished to find that she's not applying to work at her favorite card game, Spellcraft, the Magic King. Gag. Instead, (laughs) she's applying to be an actual familiar for an actual witch, as in real magic. The new job has a few perks, great room and board, excellent pay, and she's apprenticing to a powerful witch. Sure, the witch is a bit eccentric, and sure, there was that issue with the black cat Reggie would prefer to forget about. The biggest problem, however, is warlock Ben Magnus, her employer's nephew and the most arrogant, insufferable, maddening man to ever cast a spell. Reggie absolutely hates him. He's handsome, but he's also bossy and irritating and orders her around. Ben's butt might look great in a crystal ball vision, but that's as far as it goes. But when someone with a vendetta targets the household, she finds herself working with Ben to break a deadly curse. Apparently, when they're not fighting like cats and dogs, things get downright bewitching. Oh, yes, they do. I also want to preface this with, I'm in a hotel right now. There's construction on one side of me and people walking down the hall on the other. So if you hear things, that's what it is. And if they hear things, that's embarrassing. Now, they can mind their own business and so can our listeners if they yeah. hear things. Nikki's like, oh, I hope you don't mind the, the uh, ambient noise in my hotel suite. <laughs> It's my cosmopolitan lifestyle. I hope it's not too disturbing for you. I wish it was that cool. (laughs) I'm sure we can manage. Thank you for joining us, Nikki, and fitting us into your busy schedule. (laughs) Oh, thank you. (laughs) I'm so excited to talk about this book. It was so cute. Yes, I know. Me too. It was. This was on my want to read section on Goodreads for a while, ever since I saw Allie Hazelwood read it and like really hype it up because I had never heard of Jessica Clare. And then I saw that and I clicked on it and I was like, oh my God, this book sounds so much fun. I cannot wait to read this. And then actually getting approved to read the e-arc, I was like, oh my God, yes, it's happening. I'm so excited. (laughs) I knew I was going to like this book from the first page. Same. I (laughs) did not remember what it was about because I really did think that she was going to work at this company. (laughs) That's basically (laughs) Magic the Gathering. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) If that wasn't clear. Um, I really did think that was the premise. And then I'm reading the first page and I'm like, I think I have this backwards. Like, I don't think this is what's actually going on. And I'm so glad I was wrong, because it was a joy to read 98% of the time. Oh, ooh. <laughs> We're going to hear about that 2% later, I bet. <laughs> you bet your butt I am. You bet you Ben's are. butt. <laughs> Ben's <laughs> butt. Okay, is it just me, or is the cover art also very Kylo Ren and Rey? Yes. Okay, that's what I was thinking, too. But she describes him having long hair. Well, longish, you know, he has kind of longish hair. But like the guy, the oh. like picture, he looks like he has like short hair, but it's longer on the top and kind of like pushed back. But when she describes it in oh. the book, it sounds like shoulder length, like mm. curly, wavy shoulder length, kind of medieval 
looking. <laughs> Maybe the cover is like wow. his more refined, like going out look. Like he's like his gelled it back, like the yeah. hockey bros, yeah, yeah. you know, which Brothers. I wouldn't call that refined. Sorry, but <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what that is. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, I did cover... get, um, I did get, uh, what's his name? Adam Driver vibes. And I chose to ignore those feelings. <laughs> Oh, that's right, because you don't find him attractive. No. But Kelly and I do, right? Yes. I... Yeah, he's so intense, the intensity. I feel like I always talk about this, the, like, focus. Yeah. John Oliver, I mean, he puts it best, I think. Like, I don't know what it is about Adam Driver, but I am all in. I am, like, I'm here for you. <laughs> I love it. John Oliver says that? He he says many things. It's like a whole oh. bit. <laughs> he says He says, I'm all in. Basically, oh, okay. but way more colorful. Anyways, I want to get to this book. <laughs> yeah, right. John okay. Oliver got distracted. The cover of this book is so adorable. It There's is. all these little like potion bottles. There's a black cat, which I have a black cat, so I was already feeling very, um, very friendly, unfriendly terms with our friends in this book. Uh, I read this book in about a day and a half. Yeah, it, it was very, very fast, very quick read. So much fun. The yes. like all the dialogue was so. I, it's hard, so hard to describe. I feel like people always say, like, the banter was so great, and I don't always <laughs> believe it, but I think it was in this one. Mm-hmm. There was this really great, like, humor to all of the lines and all of the dialogue, and having this plot that's, I mean, I guess we're going to talk about it a bit later, but I was really interested in the plot as well as in the romance, which mm-hmm. is not always the case with um, kind of contemporary romance novels like this. So that was a really pleasant surprise for me. Yes. I think that's why I liked it so much, because there were a lot of other things going on other than just their romance. Mm-hmm. Reggie had a really interesting relationship with her roommate and her parents. Mm-hmm. Ben had stuff going on with his past. And the like with all romance books, they come together. Um, something happens to break them apart before they ultimately decide they want to be together in the end. And this is one of the few romance books that I read where I was like, that is a good reason to maybe not be together for a little while. Maybe you mm. need to ponder some some life decisions, some things happening. Because I find a lot of the time it's like really petty stuff. Right. Oh, like you eat your salad without dressing. Ew, I hate you. <laughs> like that's you what it feels like. to tell me this one detail that I now know. <laughs> Basically, (laughs) you took 20 minutes to text me back and I didn't see it because I was in the shower and now I'm mad at you. So we're not going to be together. That's what it feels like in a lot of romance books. And I didn't feel like that in this one at all. Yeah, I agree. And a lot of the misunderstandings were not so frustrating because, yeah, they were relatable. It's like, Mm -hmm. oh, I I can clearly see both sides of why they would be frustrated or misunderstanding each other. Yeah. It's not just, you're not just tearing your hair out reading it being like, just talk to each other. (laughs) Yes. And I was sort of the opposite, but not of what Nikki said earlier about like, she forgot what the book was about. And then she was like, wait a sec. I forgot what the book was about, but I had the opposite story. I thought she was, like, I thought she was going in knowing she was working for a witch and not, like, this other company. So I was like, what? What is happening? And then I was like, okay, great. But I really loved this book because I think Jessica Clare does a really good job at creating this, like, otherworldly world that is set in our world it's an urban fancy rom-com but everything is so believable it's like Mm -hmm. coexisting perfectly next to our universe in a way and it's just so much fun like i can totally believe that she's going to this special store to buy like newt skin or like what was it like horse penis or something i don't know it was like weird things like (laughs) that like horse foreskin yeah Yeah. and it's like right beside like a candle store or something you know (laughs) like but i could totally buy it well it's like it's a weed store that's like a front for magic (laughs) stuff which i thought was so funny as like usually (laughs) there's it's like a candle store or a crystal store that's a front for a weed shop (laughs) (laughs) little role reversal there that to be the 
the the cover for this yeah. magical store was just so funny. <laughs> but now in Canada, you can have a weed store and a candle store. You don't have to hide it. <laughs> no, you can have a weed candle store. Exactly. <laughs> Capitalism. <laughs> yeah, a lot no. of the time, I found myself picturing um, a lot of scenes from Buffy the Vampire Slayer mm. because not really in tone because Buffy is a lot kind of darker and this was like very lighthearted the whole way through. But I felt a lot of the like witchy stuff kind of reminded me of the witchy stuff in Buffy. I don't know. Yeah. It's been a while since I've seen it, but I just kept having all these like warm, fuzzy feelings of like being in a, in a, you know, potions shop and, you know, <laughs> like kind of having a crush on somebody be like, don't know how to deal with it. And those are all feelings I associate with Buffy. So I was really tickled by that. Oh. I know. It's like, I'm trying to balance my love life and my new realization that I'm a witch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I never watched Buffy, but I watched Sabrina the Teenage Witch and those mm. are the oh. vibes I was getting. But older because yes, she's not in high school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will fact check this, but I'm fairly certain Jessica Claire is a pen name. And yes, she I has several. That. And so she writes a lot of different genres, not just romance. And I think that might be why the plot is a little bit stronger. Mm. Not that romance authors can't write a good plot, but I find but people mm-hmm. people who have backgrounds or more background in other genres of writing bring that more into the romance genre because typically Mm. people just care about the kind of like down and dirty of it and the the plot is secondary but she Mm. really brought that to the forefront with this book and i think if it wasn't for that even though i do love magical things and urban fantasy it wouldn't have hit the the same way yeah I agree. That's a great point. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm looking at um, Jessica Clare on Goodreads, and I think her real name is Jill Miles. Oh. And yeah, she has a couple of couple of pen names, but Jill Miles' books, she has a series called The Succubus Diaries. Ooh. I have seen that. They look very steamy. Yes. <laughs> I, I think I creeped so, her one day. Just a note yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I maybe I don't know. Should we talk about our ratings? I'm a five out of five, hands down. I loved it. <laughs> Same. There were things that I was not super crazy about that we can get into later. Mm-hmm. But I, th- I mean, I read it in like a day, so clearly I was enjoying myself. Five out of five for me too. Yeah. Yeah. I ended up giving it, it's like a solid four out of five for me. Mm -hmm. It's pretty rare that I would give um, a romance novel five out of five, just for the reasons we talked about, where it's like a lot of the the plot isn't always so well developed. Um, But that's my own personal rating system. And I still really enjoyed it. Four out of five is like a great Mm -hmm. rating Mm -hmm. from me. And yeah, I had had so much fun reading Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad we all loved it because I was like, this is so much fun. I hope we all love it and we can all talk about it and gab and dish the hot goss. <laughs> so. And that's exactly what we're here to do today. Yes. yes. So since this is a mini episode, we're going to be launching right into spoilers and all of our feelings about this book. So we're not going to go into a detailed synopsis. We're just going to get right down to all the fun stuff. But before we do, we want to take a minute to tell you all about our sponsor for this episode, Anna Luisa. Ana Luisa is a completely carbon neutral jewelry company, so that includes everything from its packaging to the jewelry itself. So I don't know if you are eco-conscious like we are, but that is a huge selling point for me. Along with feeling good about buying from a sustainable company, you can also feel good knowing that they have something for everybody. The three of us all have very different styles. Very, very different, and there were <laughs> endless options for us to choose from. We all had a hard time whittling down what we we wanted. So the materials they use are also really high quality, so you don't have to worry about your ears getting itchy from cheap metals. This is a big deal for me because I actually have a lot of like metal sensitivity, mm-hmm. and I don't want to have to worry about that. I just want to look cute. And you yeah. know what? Anna Luisa is here to make me look cute. I really love small, minimal um, jewelry pieces that are kind of like quirky and unique. And I had a really fun time going through their site and uh, finding a lot that kind of described that style really well for me. Yeah, I've already worn both of my pairs of earrings to work and I've gotten so many compliments. I feel so special while I'm doing not so fun (laughs) stuff. So that's always a plus. (laughs) 
And remember, Mother's Day is coming up, so if you want to show that special birth giver in your life some appreciation, you can visit their website at shop.analuisa.com forward slash BYOB and make her day with Anna Luisa's buy one get one 40% off sale. So, if you haven't read the book and somehow don't know how it all turns out, you should stop listening now. And if you like what you're hearing, feel free to leave us a rating or review on your podcast app of choice. And if you end up buying anything special from Anna Luisa, hit us up on Instagram. We want to see what you're wearing. Yeah, tag us. If you don't want any spoilers, you should leave now. Right now. Get! I'm going to send a hex out for you. <laughs> I won't. I put a spell on you, <laughs> and now you're gone. So long. Dance party impromptu yes. for those of you who can't see us because um, <laughs> podcasting is an audio medium. Uh, but we just all danced a little bit, and you're welcome for that visual. We're basically the Sanderson sisters. Oh my god, Sanderson! And Tilly, I for the first oh, Tilly time has year. to be Bette Midler because she has red hair, and that leaves Kelly and I to duke it out about who doesn't have to be the one who sniffs everything. <laughs> Wait, is that Sarah Jessica Parker or is that Kathy and Jimmy? Kathy and Jimmy. Okay, <laughs> I'll be Kathy and Jimmy because I friggin' love her as a person. <laughs> so I'll be her. Good. No fist. Give me that sister today. act energy. <laughs> now that that's settled, uh, perfect. Should we talk about the book though? <laughs> yes, I guess so. <laughs> okay, I really want to talk about the diva herself, Aunt Drew. Oh, <laughs> my favorite part. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. She was amazing. She gave me strong, like, um, dowager countess mm. in a period drama vibes. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yes. She was always, like, causing mischief. Um, and Seriously. she's very spacey. And just, it, she's, like, a million years old. How old? 2000. She was, like, 2000 years old. <laughs> That's basically Only 2000. Years. <laughs> She'd seen it all. Nothing could phase her. Um, yeah, she was so much fun. You told me you pictured her as somebody, but I can't remember who it was. Jillian Anderson circa sex education. Those were the oh. vibes I was getting. So like, See, you I know, was picturing her much older. Well, because I was picturing her like white hair, but she still got it. She's still full of spunk and just like, I don't know. I love how the character in sex education is kind of like, you know, all up in everyone's business all the time and very busybody. And that's kind of how Aunt Drew is. But she's like more dangerous because she's a witch. <laughs> but I, less um, ethical. <laughs> I don't know if either of you have seen the movie Bar Talk, The Magnificent. It's no. basically is that an Anastasia sequel. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a spin-off oh about Bar Talk the Bat. And um, oh, wow, he, I tell you what, wow. He is, yeah, he is sent to track down the evil witch Baba Yaga from oh. her chicken house. And yes. I was just picturing Baba Yaga from that movie. So I'm sure some people listening will know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, <laughs> just just Google it. It's an experience. But I was picturing this like really short, like kind of plump lady, like, just kind of like hammering about doing like weird shit. <laughs> so definitely not like hot Jillian Anderson vibes no. at all. Or like yeah, the no, lady from Spirited Anderson's Away. I don't know. I just pictured so her. Hot, okay. <laughs> and I was just, I was, I was in a different direction, but how interesting that we each had like such a different interpretation of the character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she really captured our imaginations. Yes. And I, our hearts. Yes. Yeah. I loved her, but I was also like Aunt Drew. How dare you? She's dangerous. That girl is so dangerous. Anyway, anyone? <laughs> well, I feel like I'm transported back to like a middle school dance. <laughs> Isn't it great? <laughs> oh my god, I can't. But no, I she was dangerous at the. End. I was pretty annoyed with her at the end, actually. Yeah. But I also kind of liked it because it was a silly, lighthearted way of ending this conflict that I was, like, kind of stressed about. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, oh, it's nothing. I love that they caught her by, like, watching her, like, scrying on her. <laughs> and she just went to, like, eat a bag of chips. She's yeah. just like, oh, gonna wake up because there's no one here gonna crack open this bag and just, like, <laughs> relatable. Know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, Same. she's got a snack. <laughs> Did anyone guess that she was behind the curse? Because I did guess, but I was not bothered. 
No, I didn't no. guess. I thought when they said something about like ma- something spelled out Magnus, and I was like, oh my god, there's some sort of like long lost relative that they've forgotten about. I thought that his dad gonna was going to still fold. be alive, <gasps> yeah. and that his dad was going to like come in and do some shady shit. But yeah, no, I didn't guess until until that happened. I was like, it's definitely not Ben. Yeah, yeah. but he would never. No, no, he would never. No. But I, I guessed, definitely didn't think it was her. Oh, okay. Well, I guess pretty early on, but I was like, maybe not. We'll see. But I wasn't bothered because I was so invested in this zany hijinks that were ensuing. <laughs> so I don't even know if that was proper English, but that's where I am with this book. It was that much fun. I'm losing words. <laughs> no, that was... T- I mean, I'm I'm an authority on what is English. <laughs> I'm not. I have a bachelor's in English, so oh, I'm pretty sure. Do you have a bachelor's in English literature? <laughs> I have I a sure whole do. bachelor's yeah. degree, so it basically makes me an expert. <laughs> I'm a bachelor, so <laughs> I have a certificate in performing arts preparation. So I'm not even like ready to perform. I'm just. Oh, I guess I am ready. I just can't do it. You're just yeah. certified to prep. I'm like in the wings oh constantly. Like I'm Listen, ready. I don't think anyone listens to this podcast for like the educational <laughs> drama. Do you know what I mean? Like they don't they don't they don't want us to tell them facts. They want us to tell them feelings and opinions and, and judgments and I think we've got those. So, I think we're doing okay. The educational drama. I'm just thinking of like Schoolhouse Rock. <laughs> the magic school bus <laughs> <laughs> anyways i'm gonna move on to ben what were our thoughts on ben i personally thought he was the perfect hero for this story i thought he was caring he was very brooding strong smart he had a lot of funny banter with reggie and i enjoyed it i really did i do love a good grump honestly <laughs> oh, yeah. Give me a grumpy man who's secretly sunshine underneath, or like a big, big old softy underneath there. Ooh. Cinnamon bun. Yeah. I <laughs> yeah. definitely loved Ben. The only, there's like two things in this book that bothered me. One centered around the situation where she became a cat. And then he took her to the diner. And he's like talking about how she has to eat and she has to drink and stuff. And I was like, oh. I hate that shit. I hate men telling women how to f- fuel their bodies and stuff. Oh, I yeah. hate that so much. And it's always it always comes across, or I guess people who don't have experience with this, it comes across as them being like so caring and everything like that. And I'm like, if I want to drink water, I will fucking drink it. Yeah. <laughs> but that scene really bothered me. But other than that, I could not get enough of him i was like drink me in some ben that's what i'll drink (laughs) but like damn but that well scene though i'm not sure about the no the gunk and the bugs in the dark i I lied yeah three things the well (laughs) scene was one of them too i couldn't stop feeling like it's probably smelled like niagara falls like stagnant (laughs) water (laughs) oh no i wasn't thinking that at all i think i was just really um anything that's like we forget where we are because Mm. we're so interested in each other and like caught up in the in the the romantic moment Mm -hmm. is always very like lovely to me and yeah i think they're i think i would probably do the same thing i would i would like forget my environment and then be like now is the time where we have to make out don't (laughs) worry about anything else like nothing else matters i think for me it was the fact that they were kind of described as being like waist deep in water and then they have <gasps> deep. That's they have not what sex, I was and I'm just like BV. It's just like that's like a a yeast infection waiting to happen. <sighs> that's so awful because they like get out and they're like completely soaked. I know he falls down like on his butt, but she does not fall on her butt. So why is she completely soaked? Well, I think you know, <laughs> but like by swampiness. <laughs> I okay, maybe I missed something, but I did not picture them in waist deep water, possibly because that's not sexy, a sexy scenario to picture. Yeah, so, exactly. Um, I was definitely thinking like you know like a little little bit of splishy splash puddle situation. Uh, mm. 
Well, because yeah, I was okay with that. They but I'm changing my mind now that you're I would have been okay with that. <laughs> well, they weren't using the well, right? It was covered. So maybe it wasn't super full of water. But still, it would be stinky. There'd be bugs. Lord knows what else. It brings a whole new meaning to swamp ass because, like, oh my god. <laughs> like, even if, even if the water wasn't waist deep, he, like, touches a bunch of stuff, falls, and then puts his hand inside her. Like... <gasps> Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Like, but you that, know what? He must have some sort of spell. Like, they have right? a potion. Didn't a they have hand a potion sanitizer spell? Control? Like, <gasps> yeah. Oh, it's like every time in a fantasy book when they're going to have sex and they're like, did you take the, the whatever, like the Did you chew the herb, the herb that yeah. <laughs> yeah, Are you wearing the amulet? You yeah. <laughs> it's like, we get it. I wish pay. it was that easy. <laughs> You know, that herb you chew on once a month or once a year and it (laughs) renders you infertile. (laughs) I wish. There probably is something like that, but it's probably super dangerous and not uh, FDA approved. (laughs) Probably not reversible. Yeah. Moving on to Reggie. Yeah. Um, Great name, first of all. Great name for a heroine. No? You didn't like it? (laughs) No. Okay, I was fine with it until they're, like, having sex, and he's like, oh, Reggie. And I could only picture Reggie Bush, Kim Kardashian's ex-fiance, who was a football player. (laughs) This sounds like maybe a you problem. Yeah. (laughs) But anyway, the name Reggie didn't serve me in any kind of, um, like, arousing way. It was not good. But... (laughs) Anyway, that that was the third thing I didn't like, but I liked her. I liked the name. I I like having um, more androgynous names at times, and also it's just not yeah, a very common name to hear in general in a book. So I was like, okay, yeah, cool. Um, I would have been fine if it was like Ryan or her name was like Brett or something, but it was just Reggie. Brett. Brett. I've known a lot of bad Bretts. So that does not. <laughs> I don't know me, anybody but... personally named Brett, so oh, male or female. Two, yeah, that are bad. Yeah, same. <laughs> oh, then never mind, not Brett, but definitely not Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> However, I do want to say, um, even though we have some discourse on the name, I really liked her, and I liked that um, she was not clumsy and scatterbrained, which I feel like a oh, lot yes, of heroines God. are. Yeah. And like, okay, we can all be clumsy and like lose ourselves for a sec. We can all do that, whatever. But I'm just like, is there anything else we can talk about for a woman or like just be real people who react differently and aren't just always a hot mess <laughs> and have this man come in and be like, I'm going to help you. I'm going to be the strong calm provider like okay great but she didn't need that she had her own shit going on with her family and she was very smart and yeah i just i really liked her yeah i think the only thing that made her not seem super real to me is you see her struggle um and her try to balance her life with ocd Mm. which was great but it felt like everything she did, she's like, I'm doing this because I have OCD. And I'm like, I don't have OCD, but I have like generalized anxiety disorder and ADHD. And every time I do something that's indicative of one of those things, I don't go, I'm doing this because I have ADHD. Like that was the only thing that I was kind of like, okay, we get it. You could show, not tell so Mm -hmm. much. I think that was the only part of the book or parts of the book that I read where it reminded me that this was a romance. Mm. Cause this is a very, that's a very romance genre thing to do is the, I'm going to tell you this fact that's very clear every second page, basically. <laughs> well, and the, the kind of like the fixation on it and, and she so clearly believed that that made her unlovable. Yeah. And so she was so fixated on it every time, like every behavior that she did, she was like, that's why no one loves me, yeah. which is, yeah, a bit of a, a bit of a bummer. Mm-hmm. I also, I did um, find it a bit of a bummer that both she and Ben had really, really terrible relationships with their parents. Yeah. Yeah. I, I understand that it was like something that they could bond over together and that they could have in common, but there was another book I read recently. I forget what it was, 
where that happened as well. And it was like, that was the thing that they clicked on was that they had terrible relationship with their parents. And I don't know that I think that's kind of sad. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I realize that people do have bad relationship, bad relationships with their parents. Um, but it was just it was sad. That's all. That's it's all almost like trauma bonding instead of yeah. forming like an actual personal relationship with somebody else. Mm-hmm. I think, I mean, if it was a real world situation, that's what what it would be kind of is you're, you're banding together with this other person because of shared traumatic experience. Mm-hmm. But I think they did a good job of, I think, purely because Magnus doesn't really, or Ben Magnus doesn't really talk about the stuff with his parents. I kind of got past that because he was so silent about it until the very end (laughs) that it was really easy to kind of push that point away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like this book had so many fun side characters, honestly, which also, honestly, I feel like a lot of romance books don't always necessarily because we're so focused on the main couple. But I really, mm-hmm. really like, I mean, I already told you I liked Aunt Drew a lot, but I also like I don't want to leave this world yet. So I want Jessica Claire to write another book. And if it's not going to be Ben and Reggie, I'm like, maybe something with Penny maybe but it better not be penny and that willem guy because i I did not like their vibe he was like such a piece of shit he was i didn't want another romance with like the familiar who is chained to the warlock that weirds me out that's true i was gonna say but it would be good like enemies to lovers set up but no i actually think didn't she announce there is going to be another or am i just making things up i that i don't know you're making Maybe things you up again, it. Arnold. Maybe I did. Maybe I can, like, what is it? Like, will it into existence, you know? Ooh. Yeah. Could you please? I'll, um, I'll like, crush some herbs and light a candle later or something. You know, for the best. <laughs> 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 but I would love another book. I want to spend more time in this world. I want to see how everyone's doing and what Aunt Drew is up to. <gasps> what about an Aunt Drew spinoff? Oh my god. With like some of her husbands? Oh yeah, I feel like she absolutely had yes. some fun times oh, yeah. over those 2,000 years. Yeah. I really loved the um, the whole lore behind this world. So I agree, Kelly. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't want to leave it quite yet because I was so interested in the idea of like, I think a lot of witchy books often go to like Wicca, which is which is interesting, but it was refreshing to see this is kind of based on like ancient Roman mm-hmm. witch lore. Um, I'm not very knowledgeable about this. I'm not sure how much of it is historical and how much of it is fiction, but I had a very fun time thinking about them running around and like speaking their Latin hexes and having like tablets that they bury in the ground and they're like being so petty and there's all this society (laughs) drama between the warlocks and the witches. Yeah. It was very fun. Mm -hmm. She does at the back of the book have reference books for Mm -hmm. um, sources for some of the information. That's true, um, I forgot that. Yeah, I thought that was really cool, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know a lot about, I mean, Wiccan or, like, pagan lore either to to know, but I thought it was interesting that that's a very um, niche topic of witchcraft to mm-hmm. decide is uh, is part of your your world. Yeah, and I think it it just added even more to the story right because like i'm thinking about that scene with aunt drew and all of the women (laughs) at lunch or brunch (laughs) and i literally laughed out loud i was in hysterics just picturing these older women like (laughs) just losing their shit in a restaurant (laughs) and it was like real housewives honestly and reggie being like oh my god and talking to the other familiars (laughs) it was just so much fun I also got um, Roll Doll vibes a little bit with like the witches. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The witches. Yeah. 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 Just something about the, the tone of the writing was very like bubbly and kind of uplifting, even though there were like difficult things that were talked about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it made it just really fun to read because I kind of trusted the author 
to keep everything like light and fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think she did, even though for a while we were like worried about Aunt Drew being like in a coma or like being kind of cursed, like the deep sleep. But I never really truly felt like anything bad was going to happen mm-hmm. because I was so, um, I don't know, I just felt taken care of by the writing style. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. I did really enjoy the the uplifting-ness of it all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would even take another Ben and Reggie book. We could do it kind of like... Me too. I'm already pitching this to her. <laughs> like, picture Sophie Kinsella's Shopaholic series, but Ben and Reggie doing witchcraft. <laughs> I'm totally ready. <laughs> we don't see that. I do that. want to see that arc for Reggie yes. to become a witch in her own right. Yeah. Rather yes. than kind of... The familiar assistant thing was, like, cute, but I don't want her that there mm-hmm. her whole life. I want her to step into her power yeah yeah and they hinted at that in the book that like she yeah. is somehow in her lineage she's got the blood of the, yeah. the magic yeah so let's go i want a sequel jessica i'm here i'm ready i'm willing to read <laughs> <laughs> so what did you guys think about the spicy spicy parts yeah <laughs> That's my answer. That's it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I definitely, um, I was in the moment of the well scene, but then immediately after I was like, oh, this is awkward. Cause like now what? You're stuck in the pit. Now I'm thinking of Parks and Rec. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, no. the pit. <laughs> I fell into the pit. We have so many songs here. We're not sponsored or affiliated with any of these things. <laughs> I don't think they would be <laughs> confused about that. <laughs> I think they're like on track. But no, I really liked it. I thought it was fun, flirty, steamy without straying from the plot. And it made sense. It yes. wasn't like, oh, let's try to have a story, but then sex, sex, sex. Because that's not why yeah. I picked this book up. There's nothing wrong with that. It was, But yeah. It was very slow burn in a really mm-hmm. satisfying way, you know, that that having a very strong feeling about somebody and being like, oh, I hate them. And then being like, oh, I hate them so much. I just want to be around them all the time so I can hate them. Yeah. And then transitioning into like, I want to be around them so much, but do I hate them? Wait a minute. They look great and smell really good. And now I want to be around them for other reasons that mm-hmm. I can't understand. Yeah. I thought that was all really well done. The, the, the trajectory was really great. Yes. The first part of this book really reminded me of like a YA fantasy romance with the slow burn because in a YA romance they're because they're not taking it all the way to like home base if if I should home say base. Uh, <laughs> or a home run home. <laughs> you can tell I don't play home baseball base backwards. <laughs> anyway they don't they don't bang so yeah. <laughs> the whole book is them being like, I want to hold your hand, but I can't hold your hand. And I love that shit. Oh, yeah. I eat that up. So having that in this book, because it it's a long time until they kiss in the mm-hmm. living yeah. room. And that's what it felt like. It felt like the innocence of a YA slow burn but then you knew that you were going to get like the ultimate satisfaction at the end of being like, yeah, it happened. Hell yeah. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, it and just... it was great. And he was so caring, too. Mm-hmm. I, you, really, you really got the sense that he like was trying to learn about her interests. And we had that really sweet moment where he, had, they, he learned how to play Spellcraft, the magicking or whatever. Oh, my God. And then he like won her favorite card and he kept it yeah. in his like breast pocket close to his heart. And yeah, I thought they had a really a really lovely relationship and accepted each other for all the the things that made them kind of like quirky and difficult mm-hmm. rather than just being like, you're perfect for these reasons. It's like, no, you have all these problems, but I don't mind. Yeah. It, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter as much because I love who you are. Yeah. And that was really lovely. My husband is a huge Magic the Gathering player, collector. My partner is too. Yeah. yeah. And so I told him about it. And he was like, oh, are they going to play Spellcraft the Magicking? And I was like, yes, they are. Because he's always trying to get me to play. (laughs) Do you play? I learned how to play. I have played before. Yeah. Kelly, what if you take his favorite card 
and just always keep it in your like pants pocket do you think he'd think that was really cute or would he be like i need my fucking card to play (laughs) he'd be like if it was his favorite he'd be like you're gonna crease it and also we all know i can't fit a freaking playing card in my pocket because i have girl pants what are pockets i can't fit that pants yeah what why (sighs) anyways but no, <laughs> that was. I, I honestly think uh, a thin card like that is the only thing that would fit in some of my pockets. So, wouldn't it be too tall? <laughs> yeah, probably. yeah. I'd put it in Sideways. my back pocket. Be like, I kept it close. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> oh okay. I, I can't can fit things in my front pockets. That's crazy, right? <laughs> They're there for decoration only, <laughs> or like a stick of gum. <laughs> Wishful thinking. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> That the only thing other than her name being Reggie that I cringed at was Spellcraft the Magicking. <laughs> I, know. I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me? That is the worst name you could have picked." It's so close, and it just sounds so cheesy and embarrassing to even read it. <laughs> It didn't wow, Nikki has some strong feelings for a five out of five reading. <laughs> I yeah, I, I I mean, yeah. Yeah. But that these these conversations always bring that out in me because I <laughs> before we did this podcast, who did I have to tell all of my minor grievances to? <laughs> Nobody. So I need to take advantage of it. <laughs> oh, I tell you two and I still tell my husband. He has no idea what I'm talking about. I don't care. You're there to listen. Great. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I'm that annoying girl. <laughs> but no, I'm sure it's not annoying. Thank you. I wasn't too bothered by the name because I was like, okay, we're just go to go for the obvious. Ha ha ha. Whatever. Like whatever you know but yeah yeah like there's so many things you could have said but that's okay i still like it jessica i will still buy your next book (laughs) so i'm gonna buy this book me too i I might even buy a hard copy oh yeah Yeah. i definitely am thank you so much for listening to this episode of the byob podcast and thank you again to anna luisa for sponsoring this episode If you enjoyed this and want to hear more from us, you can head over to our social media accounts to keep up to date on all things BYOB. We've got Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, everything you could possibly think of in that list. (laughs) We may have a couple more surprise episodes for you in the next few months, so stay tuned. See you next time, and until then, keep on drinking in great stories. Cheers! (laughs) Cheers!